it was not only not his ego, but that he could uh, put aside his um, feelings about the way that he was attacked on that November, uh, I think it was November 27th call where he was attacked by somebody and um, handled it in a way that I don't think I've ever heard anybody handle it. And, and to me, it told me that the hand of the divine creator, however we look at our connection with the divine creator, which I think is becoming more pronouncedly revealed, was on Frank and the way he presented this because the time is right for these truths to come out. And Ron, what you've done, um, and I've and I got to tell you something, Terry, Ron has stuck his neck out more than anybody I've ever met in my entire life. He's tried every process there is. He's gotten in their face on everything. And uh, it took a, a fraud named Tim Turner, and I'm going to say it if nobody else wants to say it, to introduce a fraudulent system that was designed based on, I think it was Title 18. What are you being prosecuted on, Ron? Title 18 it's, uh, it's a new law. It came out um, uh, January of 08. It's uh, 18 U.S.C. 1521. Yeah, 1521. And Tur Turner's first seminars were done about a month after that law was put into effect. So you can do the math and see that he was an agent from the beginning. So I'm saying that those are my words. It's my opinion. Nobody else is Ron's or Frank's or anybody else in the UK. Here. That's, that's my opinion. And I've spoken my opinion for years when I've been on the radio. So I'm, I'm saying it. It, it. To me, it's just an absolute fact. Um, but the point being is that Ron... Ron has had the courage to stand up against these guys on paper. He's, nobody's ever written a uh, paper as efficiently and detailed as Ron has. And the only thing I've been is a guy that helps maybe do some editing and fix some grammar sometimes. But other than that, Ron's ideas are pure genius. And um, what, Frank has, what Frank did then was pull together all this knowledge. And, and, and uh, I mean, pull it together to where we would open us up. So I, I'm, I'm making a call right now to everybody who is, I don't know who's going to be on this call, who's going to listen to the archive of this call, so everybody has been one way or the other affiliated with Eucadia yeah, at, at, from Frank, maybe even over the past few years, maybe the past 20 years or so, I don't know. But everybody, no matter where you are on the planet, I want you to all come back. I want you to all consider that everybody has been lied to, that we've all been brainwashed, and that whatever perspective that we had a conflict with Frank's teaching, um, I'm going to tell you, as a Bible, a sort of a Bible scholar, I guess I'll put myself in that category, um, I can tell you unequivocally that Frank has uncovered answers that have completely opened my eyes to the rest of the pieces that I needed. And all the divisions that I think that have been used to keep us all divided need to go away. In fact, um, once we all start seeing that we are all connected on this quest and this path to be free ourselves and to free each other, um, we will actually, the system will collapse upon itself within a matter of weeks, maybe even days. Because, um, like for example, uh, when I first read OneEvil.org, and Frank had posted there the issues of, uh, of Martin Luther, who I had high respect for, and I heard Frank talk highly about being the only one to stand up against him, yet listed all the things that he did that were wrong as well. And he did. I mean, I knew about him. I just tried to cover him up, and Frank put them all out there for everybody to see. And, and then, then the follow-up of a John Calvin, who was a crook from the beginning, and, and how now all the split off of all the Protestant religions and, and all the others that have subsequently come that are called cults or whatever, whether it's LDS or Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever group it is, they've all been, they've all been structured in such a way as to cause more confusion. And there's other writers that have written on the subject of how all these different groups were put together to splitter us all further and further, giving more and more power to those on the top. And, um, and, and even what Frank said last week about the end of the, uh, the Armageddon, issue with the uh, World War I being the first attempt to introduce their Armageddon and being a failure because nobody believes six million Jews were killed in World War I. And then in World War II, so a lot of people don't believe that either. But of course, a lot of people were m murdered in that, in that war and, 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 and burned alive. In fact, I knew pilots that tried to revolt and didn't want to fly missions over Dresden when they did the incendiary bombs on Dresden, uh, an unarmed city of, of innocence that was a city of refuge. And I believe in four days murdered between 250,000 and 300,000 people. Um, and that, again, is the insanity of the system. And, and, and what Frank said last week also, which was a culminating issue for me, which is this, uh, the end of the third age of Mitra, which is also the end of the third Reich. And I believe that um, uh, before I came on with you guys tonight, I was reading through uh, the last Old Testament book of Malachi, um, Moloch, as Frank has laid out, and I, I literally got, I was shaken tonight as I looked at it, realizing that what Frank has been saying is right. They laid out a criteria for their end, and what Frank has done is he's put it fully into motion based on a timetable that they had set up. 
I mean, it's all there. Even the even the oath to lie. You know, for me, if I were to ever be dragged into court right now, I would use that oath that every judge takes to his Masonic oath or his his uh, temple oath of some sort. And I'd ask him straight out, have you sworn the Kol Nidre? Have you sworn an oath to, to lie and disavow all oaths that you make? And and just ruin him right there in front of everybody else. And it's time to get the, the bailiffs to know that the guy they're working for, the people they're working for, are a bunch of liars and that they, they use lies to deceive. And it's time to build public opinion, you know, towards us, but um, towards towards living in, in balance. And then another thing that ties in that Frank has already done, which is, is light years ahead of anything I had came up with a plan. I knew that we had to have a credit-based system and not a debt-based system. And, Ron, you and I have talked about that. And, and if Frank comes up with a system that totally is a substitute for the world debt system, and, of course, they kept us in debt by using the concept of original sin and shoved that down our throat. And every type of religion there is, all three major religions of, 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 uh, of Judaism and Christianity and Islam were all taken over and all controlled by people that knew that if they could convince us that we were born in original sin, that we were um, rotten, dirty sinners before we ever got here, that they could control us from the day we were born until the day we died. And the irony is what Frank found was, was that the whole aspect of our being born or birthed and then declared dead immediately with the seven sacraments of the Roman cult being pushed upon us, where we're, we're dead from that moment, and then, of course, the three sets of KB trust kick into action, Romanus Pontifex, the Torty Regis, and convocation, and they operate on us all those those issues, you know, and then they get us chasing our tail our whole lives as we chase for these doctrines. But um, so, like, like, so if everybody wants to read the book of Malachi, you can get in the middle of a little short book there. That that's actually what Frank has done is undoing all the stuff that they've done and putting it back on them, their, their end, which they wrote, because I could never find any evidence of a prophet named Malachi or Malachi or Moloch. You know, obviously it didn't exist. It was something scribes put together and to manipulate us and to control us. Um, also, um, if if uh, if the concept of debt is gone, and we're not born in original sin, and the Sermon on the Mount, which I am convinced, and I never got, a, I never, I actually asked Frank if this was actually how he thought, but if Matthew five, six, and seven was literally um, taken out of the original gospel to the Hebrews as Frank has indicated, was taken by this fake Saul of Tarshish who became known as the Apostle Paul, and it was also known as Barabbas. Um, if he took and altered it, it, I have a feeling that he left wholesale intact three chapters out of the original manuscript. Because if you read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it's a book that starts off with original innocence, not guilt or sin, and ends with, if you've gone into the world of debt and used people and violated these things, um, to repent of it and to give up all the past uh, dealings in the system because that's what Chapter 6 is about. Chapter 7 uh, brings us right back um, in uh, chapter, verse 7 to 12 and 14, 12 to 14, the issues of the golden rule. And it's a return, I believe, back to innocence. And I believe what we're being, being given with what Frank has taught here is an, uh, is an absolute opportunity to return back to the innocence we were born in and I believe that uh, if you read, and this is what I'd like everybody to do, um, this is what I've done, and, and to me it's really impacted me, is the journey of UCA. Ron posted it on uh, university.ucadia.info. You can read it on uh, ucadia.com at, under awareness. Um, but if you want to have the actual manuscript on your computer and just read it, um, you can get it on the PDF um, that was posted. And uh, if you read this, I, I would suggest this is the way I've read it, and it really helped me. Um, to read it this way is to read the introduction, directory chapters, first three chapters or so, and then go to the last three chapters or four chapters or so. I know it's leaving out the middle, but if you actually want to know who you are before you read this whole book, try to figure out who you are. If you're going to find it something most of us have already known uh, when we got here. We came to this earth this time that we knew that when any of us are on this call are different, different sort of people. We're not, we're not people that are just. Uh, um, goal motivated to make a lot of money and to control people and enslave people and take advantage of people. Now, the people that are on this call and have been listening to these calls are probably mostly people who actually have a deep abiding compassion and care and love for people when they meet them and when they even when they don't know them face to face. They can feel that there's a connection between us. And I believe and I contend that Jesus taught 
that we were born this way, the real Jesus, not the one created into religion and altered as to some guy that had to, um, um, that we have to uh, worship instead of listening to it, following what he taught. Um, and I and I and I also, if, for evidence of that, if you go to one hyphen uh, faith hyphen of hyphen God dot org, and you go to about the Nazarenes, and you could read, the, you see the list of the four books that Jesus wrote that were either in the Nag Hammadi or the Dead Sea Scrolls that were supposedly destroyed. We were never supposed to find them, and they completely contradict the teachings of the guy known as Paul or Saul of Tarsus. Um, they contradict it completely. And for me, you know, I came into this thing looking for the truth, and the truth to me was that we were all connected, and all people were connected, and not to be divided by religion or whatever groups there are. But this whole thing about pulling us all together and doing it in peace and doing it with forgiveness, um, Frank's introducing something that is so powerful that Jesus introduced 2,000 years ago and was introduced by Buddha 500 years before him. And uh, Muhammad tried to introduce it through Sufism, as Frank said, and it was completely taken over, became Islam, a fraudulent religion, um, like all of them had become. And, and it was all based on the golden rule of seeing uh, the other person that we, we were with or, or even if on a phone call with and seeing that whatever I say or do to him or her, I have to do it based on what I would want done to me. And if our whole society was built like that, we couldn't have a debt-based system. A debt-based system is based on always having to go use somebody and take advantage of somebody. But a credit-based system, which is built on us all coming in here with innocence and us having actually had this, this golden rule stamped on our heart from before we got here, and been able to overcome all the attempts of the society to suppress that knowledge that we came here with, but to, re- to revitalize that, to come back to that, we changed the world. We changed our world. We changed the world around us. And I believe, this is my, this is my take, that we, we came here as powerful beings, as little children. And that's why Jesus said, suffer not the little children to come unto me. He said, it's better you have a millstone tied around your neck, be cast into the sea and drowned, than to cause one of the least of these little ones to stumble. And unless you come to the kingdom as a little child, you can in no wise enter. And uh, that is the innocence of those beatitudes, those, those nine beatitudes uh, at the beginning of Matthew chapter 5. You know, the first one, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens. Blessed are the ones mourning, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are they who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, or of the heavens. Um, Blessed are you when they shall reproach you and persecute you, and shall say every evil word against you, lying on account of me. Rejoice and leap for joy, for your reward is great in the heavens, for in this way... They persecuted the prophets who were before you. And then he says, um, we're the salt of the earth, and that um, if it becomes tasteless, tasteless, it's just thrown under and be trampled by men. And then he laid out, uh, um, we're the light of the world. A city situated on a mountain cannot be hidden, so we, can't, we, we don't hide the lamp. We put the lamp stand up for people to see, and we let it shine before all men that they might see these good works, which, of course, is the golden rule, doing for other people as we want to them to do to us. And then he, then he shows that, um, and then the, the conflict of this passage, I believe, is in the next few verses. It's 17, 18, 19, and 20. And I believe that he, he answers it with the following verses. Unfortunately, most Bible teachers dissect the Bible in little pieces so they can lose the full meaning on purpose, I think, most of the time. But verse 17, he says, Do not think that I came to annul the law of the prophets. I did not come to annul, but to fulfill. Okay, right there. So we have to look for a statement of fulfillment based on that that verse, and of course I contend it's in two chapters later, in the same, same sermon, same teaching, it's in Matthew seven twelve, And so if you take that verse just as it is right there, do not think I came to annul the law of the prophets, I did not come to annul but to fulfill, go over to verse 12, and he says the following, therefore all things, whatever you desire that men should do to you or unto you, so also you should do unto them, for this is the law and the prophets. So if he's saying he didn't come to annul them, he came to fulfill them, there's your fulfillment right in verse 12. And what's happened is, is we've been played as fools our entire lives. We were trained to believe a bunch of doctrines, and, and, and instead of understanding who we were from the beginning, 
which if you read the very conclusion of the journey of UCA, it's laid out right there. 